Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to continue the identification series on poisonous plants. The leaves that you're looking at here are the leaves of flowering iris. Now there are a couple different names to this plant, like the blue iris or the blue flag iris, or even like I said, the flowering iris. Now this plant shares a habitat with a very commonly foraged wild edible plant, and that is the cattail. As you can see, all of these cattail flower spikes sticking up right here. And this is the same type of environment that you're going to find this flowering iris is usually anywhere you're going to find cattails. There's a good chance that you're going to be finding this blue flag or this flowering iris. Now this right here at the end of all my fingers is a huge patch of this iris. And if you look right on the edge of it, right over there, you can see these cattail flower spikes sticking up here. If I zoom in there, you can see that some of the leaves of the cattail, those brown leaves. They're very long, they're very sword shaped, if you will, they're kind of very almost grassy, just like this long, thick grass. That's the best way I can really describe them. And you can see here how the flowering iris leaves look just the exact same. Telling the difference between the two usually involves getting up close and personal with the plants, because sometimes on cattails you don't see those distinct flowering spikes. Now one thing you're going to notice when you get up close and personal with the flowering iris is just how fan-shaped these leaves are. These leaves are very flat, they're very long, grass-like, However, they also grow in this fan-like shape, as you can see here, they fan outwards. Whereas the cattail does not do that. The cattail grows in a round, stalk-like form, kind of like a leak, where all the leaves radiate outwards from a cylinder, instead of radiating outwards in this fan shape, like you can see here. Now, the flowering iris prefers really low swampland environment. Like I said, the same type of places that you're going to find cattail, you're probably going to be finding this flowering iris. And right now where I'm at, as you can see, all this tall grass, the flowering iris, all the cattails, there's a lot of bone set, there's wild kala, there's a whole bunch of swamp-loving plants right here. I'm basically standing in almost a swamp. If it wasn't for all this grass that I'm standing on, my feet would be soaked. So there's all kinds of edible medicinal plants that love these kinds of environments, which is a very good reason for you to know how to identify poisonous plants like the flowering iris. Now I'll also show you a picture of the flower because it obviously doesn't have its flower now. However, it is a three-petaled blue to purplish flower, almost like an indigo color, and you're going to see kind of like a cream in the center of each petal. So that's something to keep in mind. And now the flowering iris usually flowers anywhere within the beginning to middle of May all the way up until June depending on where you live and in some cases it can go all the way till July and possibly in the uh, further extremes of the north of its range however that should give you guys kind of an idea on when to look for this plant's flower because it is extremely important to know what it looks like all right now the next plant that we're going to be talking about is called horse nettle here you can see this orange to yellow berry here now this plant is in the nightshade family now nightshade family plants are notorious for being deadly and for being poisonous. However, some of them do have some uses and there are nightshade family plants like tomatoes and potatoes that we've over time even domesticated. However, this plant is poisonous. It does have some medicinal uses. We're not going to talk about those because this plant is very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing because it does contain glycoside. So we're not going to be talking about its medicinal uses today. Horse nettle is an extremely common plant usually in fields. Excuse all of the wind. But this is an extremely common plant that you're going to find in fields. And here you can see all of this Canadian goldenrod here in this huge field. And this horse nettle is growing right on the edge of this field. Now when it comes to identifying horse nettle, this time of year it's really easy to identify because you can see these yellow to orange berries. And no other plant, to my knowledge, in the eastern woodlands has berries that look just like this. Now there may be some that I'm not aware of, so you may want to do some research for your local area. However, these yellow berries stick out so well that it's pretty easy to tell that just by looking at it that this is a nightshade. The leaves of the nightshade are oval to lance shaped or kind of elliptical if you can see that here. I know the wind's kind of blowing so it's kind maybe kind of difficult to see. However these leaves are kind of elliptical in shape and you can see these lobes that they have here on the sides of the margins of the leaves. You'll notice that the very edges of the leaves are smooth, they're not serrated, they just have these lobes. Now granted this leaf has been chewed up a little bit by bugs. Another distinct feature to these leaves you may be able to see these little spines or these thorn-like things here growing on the vein, main vein of this leaf. And you're also going to notice these spines on the undersides of the main vein of the leaf as well. And on horse nettle, these spines or thorns run all the way down the main stem of this plant. Now this plant can get to varying heights within the areas that it likes to grow. 
it can get anywhere from one to four feet in height. However, this plant that we're looking at right now, as you can see here, it's only about two feet in height. It's not very tall. And I usually don't find them getting much taller than two feet where I live. However, where you live, that may be different and you may find them, like I said, growing all the way up to four feet tall. Now there are some other edible plants that look somewhat similar to this that grow in the same kinds of environments. And one of those is called the clammy or the smooth ground cherry. Now in November of last year, I actually did a comparison video between the horse nettle or what I call the thorny nightshade because it does have thorns. And the thorny nightshade is another name for this plant. But I did a comparison video between the horse nettle or thorny nightshade and the ground cherry. So if you're interested in learning the difference between those two plants, I'll put a link in the description down below for you guys to check that out. Another thing to keep in mind with this horse nettle or this thorny nightshade is that its leaves will grow alternating. Its leaves alternate all the way up the stem. So that's another important feature for identification. You see these alternating leaves all the way up the stem, and you're going to see spines or thorns all the way up that stem as well. Now the next poisonous plant that I want to talk to you guys about today was Canadian Moonseed. You can see this leaf that we're looking at here, and this is the leaf of Canadian Moonseed. Now a lot of people end up confusing the fruit of this plant with wild grape, and its leaves kind of look like wild grape leaves. There's going to be a lot of variation between the leaves. They can sometimes just be ovate or oval shaped. You know, you can see this vein structure here. Sometimes this will be all you see of the leaf, and you may not see these extra two lobes that you can see on both sides here. Canadian Moonseed is a climbing vine that oftentimes intermingles with wild grapes. And like I said, its fruits look very, very similar. One of the differences between the wild grape and the Canadian Moonseed when it comes to the fruit is both of the fruits have the same color. The seed is a different shape. Wild grapes have multiple seeds, whereas Canadian Moonseed has one crescent-shaped seed. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind whenever you're foraging for wild grapes. You know, if I turn around right behind me, I can see more of this Canadian Moonseed. And like I said, this plant is too young to have any berries or fruit yet, so I don't have any of those around to show you guys. However, they do look just like wild grapes, so that's something that you really want to keep in mind with this plant. But as you can see here, you can see this climbing along this other branch here, and this branch that it's climbing on is actually dead. And then if we get up here a little closer to this tree, we can see some more of this Canadian mood seed growing up the, along the side of this tree. So that's one of the things that, like I said, you want to look out for because this really does intermingle with wild grapes and grows in a lot of the same type of environment that wild grapes do. Another plant that you're probably going to be finding next to it is the notorious poison ivy. Or sometimes you may even find Virginia creeper, poison ivy, and Canadian moon seed all in the same spot right next to some wild grapes. One thing you might notice about the leaves of Canadian Moonseed versus wild grapes is wild grapes have serrations or they have teeth running along the side or the margin of the leaf, whereas Canadian Moonseed is smooth, just like you can see here. It's usually a very smooth three to five lobed leaf that strongly looks like wild grape leaves without the teeth. Another really unique feature about Canadian Moonseed is that the leaf stem attaches to the leaf above the base, as you can see here. This little cleft here at the tip of my index finger is the base of the leaf. And as you can see here, the stem doesn't connect to the base of the leaf. You can see it connects there above the stem. There's nothing really unique about the rest of the plant to my knowledge, except that maybe you can see here on this stem how the top of it kind of has this reddish tinge. And as you get towards the base, it gets kind of more orange or more red, depending on how you uh, interpret this color. But you can see that the stem of the vine alternates between this greenish yellow and red orange kind of tinging that goes all the way up the stem. That's really one of the only other unique features of this plant to my knowledge. But like I said, the berries of this plant are poisonous and they can do your body a lot of harm if you eat them or mistake them with wild grapes. So that's something you guys may want to look out for. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.